And note 4 is on IAS 16 and then also um, IAS 36. So that will be my working sense. So let's see what's happening in note 4. Due to rising prices, Dowding Co. decided to revalue its land and building on 1st April 2015 to their market value. The values were confirmed at the date as land 16 million, building 22 million, with the building having a remaining life of 18 years. Now, when you are dealing with uh, issues in relation to uh, revaluation, I always tell you you must consider when the revaluation is being done. From this note, when is the revaluation being done? From this note, when is the revaluation being done? When is 1st April 2015? The start of the year. So you must look at the current value of the building or the land before the revaluation so that you can get your revaluation gain. So we're going to be putting land up, we put building up, and we put total. And all working in thousands. Now, what is the cost? We go back to the trial balance to pick those items. So what is the cost of the land and building? Then we bring the accumulated depreciation. Remember, land is not depreciated, but building has an accumulated depreciation of how much? And so the carrying value at 1st April 2015, this will still be 14,000. This is going to be 45,000, and this is going to be 59,000. So at the start of the year, this were the carrying value. But they have been revalued as at that date. So we bring revalued amount. And that is going to be how much was the land revalued to? Building was revalued to So you check it out and the balancing figure is what gives you the revaluation gain. So the balancing figure is what gives you the revaluation gain. And this is going to be 2,000. This is like 7,200. And total will be 9,200. Now remember, once the assets have been revalued at the start of the year, it means depreciation will be calculated on the revalued amount. So we are told that Downing Co. No, the building has an estimated remaining life of what? 18 years. So we bring our depreciation on the building, and that's going to be the new revalued amount, 52,200 over 18. What do you have? 2,900. So. What will be the carrying value of the assets? 65. All right. So this is now the value for land and building that will go to the balance sheet. But there is something about the question again. It says, Downing Co. intends to make a transfer from the revaluation surplus to retain earnings in respect of the annual realization of the revaluation surplus. Ignore deferred tax. Okay, now remember, this depreciation on building here, this 2900, will be going to cost of sales. Maybe they will clarify to us where depreciation should be taken. But, 
apart from that, it's always uh, charging the cost of sales. Yes, usually the journey should be cost of sales. But sometimes building can go to admin expenses. I get it. So yeah, some they specify yeah, they would specify that um, twenty percent should go to distribution, eighty percent should go to cost of sales. Sorry, administration rather. I get it. So it all depends. It all depends. I think the silence is just charging. Yes, charging cost of sales. But also any yeah, annual transfer. Me. So annual transfer will be now you've got to be careful here because the annual transfer from the revaluation surplus to retain earnings in respect of the annual realization of the revaluation surplus. Now, why do we do annual transfer when we do revaluation of assets? Because of what? Because of the depreciation. Because depreciation is charged on the revalued amount. So the annual transfer you're going to be doing here will be in relation to the building's gain, not on the total gain. You've got to be careful here. So not on the total, so it's going to be just the gain relating to what? The building. So annual transfer is going to be 7200 divided by, what was the useful life? So what do I have? What was the useful life of the assets? Was it eight years? Yes, and so. We uh -huh. used, except from 1st April 2015, and then the expected life is 18 years. It means three years as well. Are you serious? And I know what I mean. Are you serious? Like, check it again. Like, how? It's a long current asset. Yeah. So, due to rising property prices, that so from this date to the date you are preparing the What date are we preparing the financial statement? 29. 20. 16. Yeah. So if one year has passed and the estimated life of the asset is 18 years, then we need to take it out from that one year which is passed. When was the revaluation done? The revaluation is, is always, when you're doing the transfer, you use the remaining useful life of the asset, which is the 18 years. Because the depreciation now will charge here, you, know, you use 18. That one is asset. Yeah. But this one, this is the revaluation date over the remaining useful life of the asset. So, what is the remaining useful life? So, why are you a person that is 17? That will be. Where, why are we doing the transfer? I'm here, I'm thinking the transfer. Yes. So where where when is the SS depreciation starting? Now the SS depreciation is coming because of what? This 18. So the gain may buy you know, SS is spreading over the whole 18 years. We won't say one year come to any year, one year, Daddy. Do you get the idea? So the same remaining useful as you use here, that's the same thing that you use here. What of it was not one year past? And the revaluation did not happen at the depreciation. SS depreciation did not happen after the revaluation. If it happened before the revaluation, what would be the treatment? Come again. If the revaluation happened before. Happened before, like when? This depreciation. You know, we had the 7,000 to another day. Yeah. Uh, um, after. Okay. Come. At my explanation, the revaluation gain happened after the day. The depreciation happened after the revaluation. This is a depreciation we are talking about. It happened after the revaluation. Yeah. What about before the revaluation and then the express depreciation of it? No. Well, this is the concept. Depreciation is always calculated on revalued amounts. And the transfer comes as a result of excess depreciation. So had the asset not been revalued, depreciation would have been calculated on the 45. In say say now you are revaluing and you are calculating on this no? The gain, we have to still use the same number of years. We cannot deduct the years. 
That's the principle we've been using all this while. And that is, it's the, that was the same thing we did. We so never deducted the period. Is remaining useful life? Because the language will tell you, that's why the examiner told you in the question that uh, with the building having an estimated remaining life of 18 years. Do you get the concept? So, estimated remaining life. So, that remaining life, because who said this is what happens? Anytime you revalue that set, the, sometimes the remaining life will also be what? Changing. So the language of remaining useful life will always what? Be there. So once that remaining useful life is given to us, that is what we slash in here. So the same thing you use here is the same thing you use there. That's the idea. But this is the question I expect I expected as well. What if this revelation happened at the end of the year? So what will you do? If the revaluation happened at the end of the year, would there be annual transfer? No, I don't think so. You don't think so? Any other? If this asset was revalued at the end, like the day we are preparing the financial statement, they revalued, would there be, how would we calculate depreciation for that year? Do you understand my question? Or I should rephrase. See, it depends on what? It depends on what? It depends on what? See, if the revaluation happens at the end of the year, how do you charge depreciation? There will be no depreciation charge on the revalue amount. So, who, what will you charge the depreciation on? Nothing. So, you won't charge depreciation that year? The more of it. Okay. <laughs> it's going to be on the uh, revalue amount. Yeah. Hey. It's still going to be on the revalue yeah, This is, if you revalue the asset at the end of the year, right? That means at the end of the year, no? Like you've already revalued the asset. So you charge depreciation for that year already. So you won't charge depreciation on that because the depreciation on the revalued amount will go to the following year. Into that year, no, there wouldn't be anything like what? Annual transfer because there was not anything like excess depreciation. Do you understand? Do you don't understand? As you rewind, <laughs> this is what I'm saying. If revalue, 